nearly had a heart attack when we lost signal. And these are the first animals we've seen this morning. <laughs> but the signal thankfully has come back. And the Impala are still here. And I'm very happy to see them. I'm going to creep forward a little bit. It may affect the signal again, but I think that chance will get you viewed and continue where we are. Interestingly enough, there's one male lurking at the back of this herd. And he may think he's important by associating himself with all these ladies. But to be honest, it means nothing because at this time of the year, the ladies aren't in season. And therefore, he is achieving nothing other than company by being with them. It's probably a false alarm because they're all facing in different directions. What on earth could they be alarming us? Unless there is something. taking that opportunity while the signal was gone to practice his filming of grass. It is not an easy subject to film and he thought he would do a little bit of practicing on that and that is where we are right now. So the Impala, I'm not sure if you heard them alarm calling before the signal cut off but basically they were just having a false alarm and even animals do make mistakes so they just alarming that probably one got a little bit of a fright and then the rest thought they therefore needed to also join in in the alarming and that happens from time to time it's just not ideal when it happens in a quiet morning and it gets you very excited So this is an example of them not necessarily eating it, it themselves, but they will lay their egg in it and the egg will then feed on all of the nutritious leftovers inside and continue with their life. Anyway, I will plug that down where I found it. Another beetle here, probably the male, trying to establish what exactly to do with this ball. Their plan would be to bury it. And that was the female that was just clinging on, waiting for him to make a plan on what to do next. Sadly, though, the, the vegetation in the it's very difficult for us to show you what he's up to, otherwise we certainly would stay. Also the angle of the camera and the zoom, it's not really going to work. Which he says equates to shortened t-shirts weather in Yorkshire. Um, so <laughs> Alex is basically telling us to harden up 
deal with what we think is this cold weather, but it's actually very pleasant. No, I was wrong. Nothing's coming at us. But it could have happened. The question just come through from Anne on Twitter asking whether I keep track of what I see on drives. And no, I don't. I am terrible at keeping track of such things. Um, so no, I never keep track of what I see. Um, I guess photographically, I photograph a lot of the things I see, so a lot of photographic kind of journal. Yeah, we'll take whatever we can get, Jesse. Whatever we can get, sir. Um, which corner? This one there? Okay, all done. the colony are doing some renovations. Yes, and just to finish off your question, the short answer is no, that I never keep track of anything that I see. So, why do you ask that out of interest? What, uh, what is it that uh, interests you into why I keep track of things? It is, just like what I've done, I'll snap off one of these branches. And... I would probably have a knife on them, which I could add. And basically what you do is you you remove the bark from the outer layer of the, the stick or branch, just as I've done here, and you then chew on this chew on this to kind of Get it into a more fibery, fibrous and bristly texture, more like that of a toothbrush, as you can see now. And then you brush your teeth. Job done. Thankfully, I brushed my teeth with a regular toothbrush this morning, so I will not need to continue doing that. But it is actually quite nice to do when you've got nothing else to do and you're sitting under a tree out here. Um, and judging by a lot of the local people, especially the older locals, that would have certainly used a lot of those quarry branches. Their teeth are in great shape, so it appears that it could work there. Oh, there's apparently traces of flora in that that branch so it does have a slight whitening effect apparently very slight that i'm sure toothpaste and a toothbrush is better for you than that but if you are desperate you can use the magic guari spells g-u-a-r-r-i guari bush yes alex go ahead sir as i saw and went um I'm just happy to be out here enjoying it, and the the bolder, more memorable sightings do stick, but maybe though you're right that I should just get a journal going.
so that I can look back on it one day. But at this stage, um, happy to just keep as much in my head as possible. Now these little birds are beautiful bee eaters, and as their name suggests, the little bee eater. They are very small, and the smallest of the bee eaters that we get in this area. And it was just yesterday that I was speaking about... I'm just going to reverse a little bit, sorry. Not that I don't like these bee eaters, but there's another perch where some are landing that also allow me to look into this tree where some virtual starlings are alarm falling. I'm not sure what it is they're manning about, but I am going to have a quick look in there. What is the commotion about? tend to be quite vocal, so it could be a false alarm of sorts, or it could be just something that's too small for us to see. But if we keep watching, we might... Get closer to whatever it is that is frustrating them. I was hoping it was going to lead us to a snake, but so often we come up with nothing sadly when we respond to these birds' alarm calls. Oh, look at the cuckoo on the top there, Jason. You got it. Yep. That looks like a red-chested cuckoo, but it doesn't have a very red chest. Um, <laughs> oh, it is. Look at it calling. Beat my frog. <laughs> awesome. So that is a red-chested cuckoo. Oh, there it goes. That was a red-chested cuckoo. The first one that we've managed to to show you, or the first one that I've managed to show you, and that was a luck because the cuckoos are typically quite secretive, so even though these starlings didn't lead us to the snake, they led us to a tree that a cuckoo flew into, so that's good enough. time the little bee eaters appeared to have disappeared. Question just come through asking how long a leopard scent mark lasts for. Now, to the human nose, I'm not too sure, and to the leopard's nose, I'm not too sure. But I would guess that leopard can follow the scent provided there hasn't been rain for 
days after the St. Mark was